how should we assess and improve the performance of international peace operations? This is the topic of the third dialogue strand of the virtual annual challenges forum in 2020. My name is Anna Bouvi de Grand, and I'm joined here today with Cedric de Kerning, a research professor at NUPI and coordinator of the Effectiveness of Peace Operations Network, EPON, and Jenny Nutvet, junior research fellow with NUPI and EPON secretariat member. For those who don't know EPON, this is a global research consortium of more than 40 institutions that are collaboratively working and undertaking research into the effectiveness of specific peace operations. Cedric and Jenny's background paper on the performance of peace operations explores challenges to effective mandate implementation and assesses recent research into the effectiveness and performance. The paper further looks into the comprehensive performance assessment system, CPAS, a whole of mission assessment system and the force command unit evaluation system, which assesses the performance of specific units. Cedric, what made you look into this area of work and what are some of the key highlights from the background paper? How can we use the background paper to expand the topic? Thank you, um, Anna. Well, you know, the UN and UN peace operations have come under complete uh, increasing pressure over the last couple of years, some of it financial, but really looking at, at uh, you know, reducing the size of peace operations, trying to end peace operations um, as soon as possible in order to reduce the cost of peacekeeping. And then in that context, the, the conversation focuses very much around performance, which parts of a peace operation should be retained, uh, can be cut, what parts of a peace operation or what makes a peace operation effective or not. These are the kind of, of questions which are then very important to answer. And so part of our work is about generating evidence to inform that kind of decision making. And we hope the background paper prepares our discussion at the Challenges Forum so that we can look into what exactly do we mean with performance, how is performance assessed, and who are the people who are doing performance who can improve performance in peace operations. Thank you so much, Cedric. Now, Jenny. We know that the emerging findings of the studies undertaken by F1 to date have found that most peace operations make significant contributions to preventing major civilian war and large scale violence. However, F1 studies findings show that sustainably ending violent conflict can only be achieved politically. Please tell us more about the research F1 have done and key findings in the research. Thanks, Anna. Um, when the AEPON network was established, uh, there were already a lot of research into the performance of peace operations, but most existing uh, research has been uh, focused on large-scale quantitative studies and not many focused on the specific effects of peace operations in a specific context. So AEPON aims to address this gap and try to assess different missions in their own context. And the network studies, um, they employ three analytical tools. First, a context analysis, uh, and then identification of effects and review of explanatory factors. And these uh, explanatory factors are especially influenced by former research and former reviews and strategies, especially the HIPPO and uh, the Action for Peacekeeping agenda. And, uh, when EPON, um, it was initiated in 2018 and has since then conducted studies into the effectiveness of six uh, different ongoing peace operations. Uh, the first studies of EPON was focused on a more narrow definition of peacekeeping and included studies into the African Union mission in Somalia, the UN missions in DRC, Mali, South Sudan, Central African Republic, and more. Um, and uh, now we recently we see the network also uh, looking into the next generation of peacekeeping missions, for example, conducting studies into um, uh, studies of the UN verification mission in Colombia, uh, the EU and OSCE missions in uh, Ukraine. And next year, the network, network will also move in, into studying conflict settings with several ongoing missions, uh, for example, the AU, G5, UN, and EU in Mali. Um, and as you mentioned, Anna, the findings of the studies to date 
show that most of the peace operations have made contributions to preventing civil war. Uh, however, they cannot bring an end to violent conflict without political will and support. Um, mandates that reflect the situation on the ground and enough resources to conduct their mandated tasks. So uh, in this dialogue strang and in the first session, we will um, dive into the different EPON studies and uh, look into the specific studies with the uh, lead authors in the breakout groups. So we will hear more on uh, both the challenges and effects of these specific missions there. Thank you, Jenny. We're very excited to read more on F1 studies. So Cedric, the Comprehensive Performance Assessment System, or CPAS, and the Force Commander Unit Evaluations are rather new initiatives by the UN to measure impact and evaluate military units. So why are these tools so important and how can the UN ensure proper implementation? Yeah, Anna, yeah, so in the second session of the Dialogue Strand, we look at these two specific examples uh, of systems that the United Nations use to assess performance. Uh, the Comprehensive Performance Assessment System is a system that looks at the, the context within which a particular mission operates. So it's not a generic system for all, for all missions, but it's context specific to each mission. And it assesses the whole of system effect or whole of mission effect. So everything the mission does together, military, civilian, police, different components, how it contributes to common objectives, let's say like protection of civilians. And it generates data uh, and a process that helps the leadership of the mission to regularly take decisions, review performance, and take decisions about how they can improve performance. And the force commander's evaluation system is a system that looks at the performance of specific units in specific missions. And it essentially either recognizes and rewards performance, good performance, or it helps to identify and understand and improve underperformance in particular missions. Thank you, Cedric. So, Jenny, how do you see women, peace and security agenda being mainstreamed into peace operations? And why do we increase, why do we need to increase the numbers of women? Thanks, Anna. I think it's very important to discuss how women peacekeepers can enhance the performance of peace operation during this dialogue strand, especially because it's 20 years uh, since the adoption of the UN Security Council Resolution 1325, um, but also because empirical evidence from the EPON network uh, highlight the importance of greater uh, gender parity in UN peace operations uh, for missions to successfully achieve their mandated tasks. However, we also see progress on increasing the numbers and gender parity um, being slow and uneven, um, particularly in uniformed roles. And this is due to a number of reasons, uh, but in particular, a lack of political will, uh, financing and accountability. And I think an, um, an often cited argument for increasing female participation um, is that it boosts the overall effectiveness and performance of the mission, including better outreach to com local communities, better protection of civilians, and greater attention being given to gender equality in the mission itself. Um, but still research also show how we need to reflect on the discourse regarding the added value of women in peace efforts. Um, and it's both because it's difficult to measure the isolated effect of female peacekeepers, and we risk placing an unnecessary burden on female peacekeepers that they need to prove their um, worth and, uh, and uh, more when deployed. Uh, but I believe it's safe to conclude that more women are needed in peace operations, both on grounds of equality and performance. And I hope we will discuss this further uh, during this ILX round. I hope we will discuss that further as well, Jenny. Thank you so much. Uh, now, Cedric, in the coming 10 years, what would you say will be the main challenges and alternative approaches to the assessment of peace operations? And what do you think are the key areas that we should discuss further in the dialogue strand three? Yeah, I think uh, some of the challenges we're going to face is, is how to analyze the data that are being generated. So how can we use technology, big data, artificial intelligence? to really uh, use the data to, for instance, uh, 
help us with predictive peacekeeping or predictive trends. Um, we also need to get better at understanding exactly what is the kind of information that the system that the leadership needs in order to make decisions about improving performance so that we can present that information to them in a specific way. I think we also need to look at understanding the role of these missions in the larger system or the larger picture. So looking at, at multiple missions in the same theater and multiple uh, contributions from different actors in the same theater and how that collectively and cumulate, cumulatively builds up to, to performance or to effectiveness and impact. Uh, we also, you know, we, we look very much at the missions, but I think we also need to look at the headquarters role that many of the things that are happening at the headquarters level have a profound impact on the effectiveness of a mission or not. So, so that's important to factor in. And then I think we need to understand better how we can use the different forms of performance assessment. So the kind of uh, assessments that are happening inside missions, the kind of academic research we do through EARPON, the kind of strategic reviews commissioned by the Security Council or the Secretary General. How can we combine these different uh, perspectives on performance into making overall judgments about the effectiveness of specific peace operations and then learning from all those studies the kind of macro knowledge about what works, what doesn't work, what are the major factors to take into account mm -hmm. when it comes to the effectiveness of peace operations. I want to thank you both for highlighting the several challenges facing international peace operations performance today. Uh, systematic collection, management, and analysis of data is key to analyzing performance and effectiveness, and we look forward to discussing this further at the virtual annual challenges forum in 2020.